Hello world, welcome back to the Razor RC and today we are talking about giant tires. If you have an RC car and hopefully you do, otherwise I'm not sure why you're watching this channel, but if you're into RC cars, if you have one, if you bought one, one of the first things you probably think about when you get an RC car is, well, you know what, this car could use some bigger tires, right? Everyone loves big tires, whether you're driving a monster truck, an on-road vehicle, a race car, whatever. You know, everyone loves big tires. No one really goes with smaller tires. They buy a car and the first thing they think is, Let's get some bigger tires. And so it may seem like kind of an obvious thing, right? Uh, there's not a whole lot to think about. You just buy a tire, make sure the hex is the right size and you just bolt it on. What is there to think about? But there's actually a fair amount of things to consider, uh, to be aware of when you buy bigger tires. And I just want to cover those. We're going to talk about 10 different things to be aware of when you put on some bigger tires on your RC car, uh, I'm pretty sure some of these will surprise you and be things you probably didn't think about. So hopefully this helps out. What we got in front of us is a Traxxas Stampede 4x4 VXL. I got the stock wheels on the back. These are just some Talon tires and wheels that it comes with. Now on the front, I actually have some aftermarket wheels. These are actually uh, Rolex wheels and uh, I forgot the name of the tires chopper tires I believe something like that um, that they no longer make but these are some bigger tires on the front you can see that they're a little bit different size stock tire and the bigger Rolex wheels and chopper tires on the front so uh, let's get into it first thing to realize when you put on some bigger tires is that obviously that they're bigger they're gonna have a you know longer diameter a little bit taller profile uh, obviously a longer circumference as well and then you can kind of see a stock tire so what does this mean in terms of gearing well you definitely will want to change the gearing if you just run this out of the box depending on how big of a tire you put on uh, you're generally going to overheat the motor it's going to be a lot more of a taller gearing than what it came with so something i definitely recommend doing is kind of doing some simple math it's not anything complicated you basically just take the diameter of the original tire you know you just kind of measure out let's say it's like five inches or something and then you take the diameter of the bigger tire let's say it's like six inches it's not actually six inches in this case but you just do some simple math in this case five six right the smaller tire over the big tire is five six and you multiply that times the original uh, pinion gear on the motor so you you want to start with basically the same rollout or the same gearing that you would have with the original tires all these RTRs are basically designed for a certain size tire in mind and when you go with a bigger tire your gearing is going to go up higher it's basically going to be under geared a little bit or I'm sorry over geared a little bit so just do some simple math so in this case for example five six maybe you have a 24 tooth pinion gear that's the gear on the motor you just multiply let's say 24 tooth gear times five six you end up with 20 tooth so just to start out with I highly recommend just changing out your pinion gear to that same ratio so in this case let's say a 20 tooth pinion gear throw that on it'll keep the exact same gearing as you had before it's nothing too crazy no crazy math or anything like that but um, that'll keep the gear ratio the same if you run it as is with a much bigger tire you're basically going to be overheating the motor it's going to be geared up too tall it's going to accelerate a little slow um, and this just kind of is a good place to start now once you kind of get a baseline do some temp checks and stuff on your motor make sure it's driving okay then you can kind of play with the gearing either up or down depending on what you want but um, yeah that's something that's pretty much important to do out of the box even just bounding on simple tires like that, putting on big old tires, uh, you do want to adjust the gearing to match. Next up is something fairly basic, but something, again, a lot of people are not aware of, and that is once you put on the bigger tires, uh, you're going to obviously lift the truck or vehicle off the ground a little more. It's going to have more what's called ride height. It's going to be higher up off the ground, but one thing you want to make sure is that the chassis can still touch the ground when the suspension is fully compressed. So obviously, so when you compress the shocks all the way, 
make sure that chassis can still touch the ground. You want to be able to hit the ground with the chassis. I know it seems kind of counterintuitive that you want the chassis to hit the ground. You know, a lot of people think that noise is really annoying when you slap the chassis. But the reason you want that is that you don't want the shocks to fully compress all the way and not be able to touch the ground. And the reason for that is that these shocks are, you know, generally pretty wimpy little things. They got little three millimeter screws up top. Uh, if you don't allow the chassis to top touch the ground, the shocks are gonna take all the forces of that impact when you do a giant jump or whatever. When you jump it like 20 feet high, land on the ground, these shocks compress all the way. And if the shocks compress all the way, the chassis doesn't touch the ground, well, you're gonna put all the forces on the shocks themselves. You're gonna end up bending shock shafts, you're gonna break rod ends, you're gonna pop off the shock caps, you're gonna bend these little screws, they're gonna pull out of the arms. Lots of bad things will happen when the shocks basically have to take all the impact and they're like fully compressed and can't go anymore. So really simple thing, just throw on your tires, make sure you can press the vehicle all the way down to the ground. Even have a little more extra give is a good idea because these foams compress, these tires compress. It'll actually go even further than you think. Or you might not land completely flat. You might land on one corner, you know, a little flatter than the other. So yeah, something to check is to make sure your chassis still touches the ground with those bigger tires. Number three on this list is to make sure the tires don't rub the body. Well, you're looking at this car like, okay, the tires are not rubbing the body. What's the big deal? Well, one thing you want to make sure you do is turn the tires full left, full right, compress the body. And what you may see is actually the tires rubbing the body. And these tires will not only rub the body, you know, at full compression, but also when you're going really fast, the tires balloon a little bit, right? They'll expand a little bit due to centrifugal force. And even though it might not touch the body, uh, you know, just driving in a straight line or whatever, under power at full lock, you may find the tires uh, rubbing the body. So if it's not rubbing too bad, maybe you just leave it like that. Maybe you trim the body, but it's something to be aware of. You'll hear this like nasty scraping noise when you're doing, especially like in the air on full power with the wheels turned. That's when you'll notice the, the most with the wheels turned on a lot of power. So something to double check on your vehicle. Make sure the tires don't rub the body, especially at full lock, especially at a lot of power. And you'll want to, you know, check it through the suspension travel because that's how your vehicle will be driving. Number four on this list is to check that your endpoints still match correctly with different tires, with different wheels. Maybe you have a different offset of the wheel. Just check your endpoints and hopefully you know what check endpoints means at this point. I have a lot of videos on how to set your endpoints. But what that means is basically setting where your servo fully extends to both left and right, making sure the wheels don't rub against uh, the arms, that's something that may happen. Tires might rub against shocks. Uh, steering links may rub up against the tires here. So a lot of different things can hit once you put on different size tires and wheels. And setting your endpoints is critical, both to make sure you're not you know, damaging that servo by trying to overextend uh, both left and right endpoints, but also that you're not rubbing or hitting things on your wheels and tires uh, with those bigger tires and wheels on there. Next thing to be aware of when you buy different wheels and tires is to make sure you get the right inner diameter. For one tenth scale trucks, uh, there's a couple different sizes. It's generally 2.2, 2.8, and possibly 3.8 inch wheels. That's basically the inner diameter of these things. You wanna make sure you get the right wheels that will actually clear the steering on the front. Uh, most sort of 10 scale Traxxas vehicles or armored vehicles are gonna use like a 2.8 inch wheels. Something a little bit bigger like a Max is gonna use maybe like a 3.8 inch, inch wheels to basically clear all those steering components, those knuckles, all those hubs in the front end. So just make sure you get the right size wheels. It's really simple uh, and easy to do. Just, you know, sort of measure the stock wheels uh, that come on your vehicle. For example, this one is 2.8 inches so you want to at least get a 2.8 inch uh, wheel when you mount it onto this vehicle uh, but getting the right inner diameter on your wheels is critical just to make sure that they will fit on your RC car. Number six on this list is to realize once you put on bigger tires and wheels Obviously, they're going to be heavier. They're probably going to have a little more traction. There's a lot more friction on the ground because they're wider. They're rubbing against the ground a little bit more. And so what to be aware of is that your servo may need to be upgraded. So something like this, the Traxxas 2075 
plastic gear, so we're not particularly strong. I think it's got 125 ounce inches of torque. Uh, these things are basically the cheapest servos that the manufacturer can get away with with the stock tires. So they're designed to work with the stock tires. Once you go with a bigger tire, bigger size, a little bit heavier, uh, your servo may end up actually not being able to turn those uh, tires and wheels with authority anymore. You know, they may kind of drag, they may turn like super slow, they may not even be able to turn the wheels all the way. So something to be aware of is once you put on the bigger tires, it's probably worth it to get a better servo. These things are barely adequate for the stock tires. And with the bigger tires, you know, they're generally going to be super weak. Uh, not only just the servo, but also the servo saver. So on this particular vehicle, it's got a servo saver built into the steering system. These things, again, are designed to basically save your servo. That's why they're called the servo saver. They're basically designed to give uh, if there's any sort of excess force on the wheels and tires. And they generally have like a really light spring and designed to save that, you know, really cheap servo. So once you upgrade the tires, you probably want to upgrade the servo and maybe even upgrade the servo saver as well, either using a stiffer spring or an aftermarket part or something like that. Um, otherwise, you may find that you know you got these new tires, maybe have more traction, but they don't really seem to steer all that well. And a lot of that is going to be due to either the servo or the servo saver. So something to be aware of uh, with bigger tires and wheels. Number seven on this list is to check the offset of the wheels that you buy. Probably you're going to buy the same size wheels, but they do make different what's called offsets and that is basically the spacing uh, of the hex from the outside of the wheel. So different manufacturers have different offsets, different wheels, that kind of thing. Uh, for example, a lot of the monster truck, 10th uh, scale monster truck wheels come in either what they call a zero offset or a half inch offset. For example, if you buy Proline wheels, uh, in general, you know, you want to make sure uh, you're getting the right offset to match your vehicle. For example, the Stampede 4x4, they use uh, basically the half inch offset, which is the same as the Stampede front wheels on the two wheel drive, but other vehicles may use like the zero offset. So for example, the rear wheel on a Stampede two-wheel drive uses a zero offset. So check the offset. If you're not sure, I would go with a little bit wider wheel. That way you'll have, make sure you have enough clearance uh, that your wheels aren't you know, tucked in too tight. That would look really weird and probably not drive particularly well. So uh, whenever you're buying wheels and tires, make sure you're buying the right offsets. Most of these like uh, pre-mounted tires come with a particular wheel that has a different offset. You wanna make sure you buy the correct size. Following along with wheel offset is something called tire scrub, and I'm not gonna get into the, all the whole physics of this or whatever, but there is some downside to getting some super wide offset wheels. If you pull the, the wheels out, you know, a lot more than the stock wheels, as you can see on this vehicle, it's slightly wider in the front than it is in the rear. So I do have a little more positive offset, uh, a little more positive tire scrub as well on the front tires. And uh, there's something called tire scrub or tire scrub radius. Uh, I'm not going to explain the whole thing, but the basics of that are the wider you make the wheels, generally the less steering you're going to have. The vehicle is obviously going to be more stable, less likely to roll. It's going to have a wider track width. But the downside of having all that width is it's not going to steer quite as well. There's something basically called like a zero scrub uh, where the tires are in line with basically the pivot points on the spindles. The further you get away from that, the more tire scrub you have and the less it's actually going to steer. There's going to be more friction, more resistance in actual turning. So there is some downside to going like super crazy wide offset wheels. You know, a lot of people put on like 17 millimeter uh, axle stubs or whatever and like mount these things like super crazy wide out and then they find that their car doesn't actually turn. So there is some downside with going all crazy with the width. You know, wider is not necessarily better. Uh, just something to be aware of. I try to keep you know generally uh, wheels that are pretty close in offset pretty close in uh, tire scope as the stock wheels I think that's a good place to start just something to be aware of don't always go with the crazy offset wheels the last thing to realize when you mount on bigger wheels and tires is that they're going to be heavier than your stock tires so you may wonder well what does that actually mean Obviously, with the wider uh, diameter of these tires, you want to gear it down. Again, with the heavier tires, you're going to notice different things. Generally, it's going to put more strain on your motor. It's going to generate a little more heat. It's going to accelerate actually a little bit slower if you have the same gearing. 
Um, it's also going to slow down a little bit slower because there's more rotating mass that you got to try to slow down. And the last thing is to realize that in the air, the bigger, heavier tires are going to rotate the car more. So you'll be more easily able to do backflips, front flips, all that thing. The bigger and uh, heavier the tire are, the more easy it is to do flips and tricks in the air. So if you're looking to do a lot of stunts and crazy jumps and send its and front flips, all that kind of thing, Bigger tires will help, but be aware that they will generally be at the expense of heat. You're gonna find the car a little bit slower depending on how big of a heavy uh, tire you put on, and it'll also slow down a little bit more and generate more heat. So anyways, that's it. 10 little things to know about your RC car when you put on giant tires. Um, I hope this video was interesting, useful, entertaining. Uh, don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. Look for more videos soon. Thanks for watching.